So, a couple of days ago, or a day ago, depending on how you view it, New Japan Pro Wrestling um, had uh, a very important event called Wrestling Decato, or Decato, or whatever it was. I, I, do, I do apologize for it. Uh, but it took place um, in an, it wasn't in Tokyo, but it was in another place, another dome, a poi poi dome or something like that. And it was also important because it celebrated it celebrated the anniversary of the formation of Bullet Club. Bullet Club apparently, and I well not apparently, but legitimately formed nine years ago in Japan at the same event. And now nine years later, they're still around. But what's interesting about it is, just like any time they celebrate, you know, a Bullet Club's anniversary, of course Bullet Club has to go over in a major way. You know, they have to go over, you know, you know, in championship matches, stuff like that. So, um, they're ba so basically they're given sort of like a you know, they're kind of given sort of a, a thank you, if you will, for, I guess, when they first formed, even though they were supposed to be, I guess you could say, a modern take on the NWO, basically be foreign wrestlers that spit in the face of traditional Japanese wrestling, they basically helped put New Japan on the map. And by extension, but with, and by extension with New Japan's association with um, other wrestling companies outside of Japan, like an Impact, you know, Ring of Honor and stuff. They were able to help put those promotions on the map as well. At least, some get, at least get them more notoriety than usual. And this past uh, Monday night or Tuesday morning, depending on how you view it, uh, was no exception. They were given basically. They were well, basically they were given the spotlight because. You had Chase Owens and Bad Luck Fale win the World Tag Team Championships. You had Ishi, you had, uh, not Ishi, but, um, what's that guy, the, the Bone Soldier, as he's called, win the Junior Heavyweight Championship. And, of course, you had a couple of new members, or at least one new member, join up that nobody saw coming. That being Juice Robinson, the former C.J. Parker and such. You know, you had him join. And you also had the longer rated in Japan, not part of the U.S. strong promotion or strong, you know, extension promotion uh, based in Los Angeles and stuff. But le le legitimately in Japan itself at said event that the uh, Bullet Club debuted in uh, nine years ago, you had the return of Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, Big LG, to Japan. And you have Carl Anderson basically making it clear that he wants a shot at Tamatanga. I think that's who it is. And his new Never Openweight Championship. So, yeah. Along with some other things that happened um, as well. Um, Bullet Club basically had a great ninth anniversary, if you will. There were a few moments, you know, that were not worth celebrating. But they were made up for, like... Like I said, when Tama won the championship over Evil, you had Juice Robinson and Chase Owens. While well, Chase Owens distracted him, thinking, okay, I'm going to be the one that challenges you, but instead it's Juice Robinson. Uh, if you were, well, no, actually, it wasn't Juice Robinson. No, it was, no, it was, okay, let me correct myself. Okay, you had, you had Tama beating Evil, then you had Anderson and Gallows, you know, make the return, legitimate, legitimate return to Japan and all that, and Carl challenging for the championship. You had, uh, you had Tanahashi win the U.S. championship and then get confronted by Chase Owens and you're thinking Chase Owens is going to challenge him and instead it turns out to be a ruse and it actually ends up being Juice Robinson who made everybody believe with the big, one of the biggest swerves in recent memory when it comes to sports entertainment pro wrestling that he was done. And it was a ruse, so he, in, in, well, not a ruse, but, well, yeah, it was a ruse because basically he was sick and tired of waiting, and he wanted to throw people off of, hey, you know, I'm not retired, I just did this so I can finally get out of these 
situations that I'm in to focus on what is mine, which is the IWGP US Championship. So, you know, with that in mind, with that in mind, you know, along with, like I said, some other things, you know, they had a decent ninth anniversary. And it seems that it's a celebration that's going to be going on at least for a week, a couple of weeks, depending on where you see the Bullet Club. You know, you even had Jay White, you know, attack Okada, declaring his intentions, or making his intentions very clear. So you had a lot of things happen that were kind of like moments that helped celebrate the anniversary for Bullet Club in a decent way. But the question obviously is, and I know I'm taking a while to get to this, and it's about five minutes, and I've got about five minutes to go anyway. But, it, you know, it does raise a question, though, as I'm about um, six minutes, five seconds in. It does raise the question, we know Bullet Club is potentially heading to a 10th anniversary as a group next year. And everybody would hope for a big celebration and certain returns to make that you know memorable but if not you have to wonder if this ninth anniversary which will lead into the 10th anniversary you know is this the last hurrah for bullet club because they are one of the longest lasting factions inspired let's not be let's not be you know um you know uh what, what's the word i'm gonna say let's not be so um you know over over analytic about this but let's be honest it is true they are one of the longest lasting promotion uh, factions inspired by the nwo very similar in a way if you will i mean you even had kevin nash one time when uh, global force wrestling was a thing basically passed the baton so to speak to bullet club saying hey you're the new nwo you're the new you know cool guys on the block and you got my blessing, you have my blessing and the NWO's blessing. So, you know, you have to wonder, you know, if this could be it. Even if they make it to the 10th anniversary, could this be the last major year for Bullet Club? Seeing as though they are one of the longest lasting factions in overall pro wrestling that are, like I said, inspired by NWO and such. You know, you have to wonder, is this it? Is this the last hurrah, or are they going to keep going? I know a lot of fans would love Bullet Club to keep going. Don't get me wrong, I would too. But you have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, is this it? Could this be the last time Bullet Club rides into the sunset or rides off, you know, causing mayhem and havoc and all that, doing their own thing, before hanging it up and riding off into the sunset and disbanding to do their own stuff. You have to really think about that. You have to think about that because you have several sub-factions. Because basically when it comes to the initial Bullet Club uh, group in Japan, you have several sub-factions within, or at least one or two. One is the House of Torture and there's another one. And then if you come stateside, you have a Bullet Club faction in uh, Impact Wrestling, where you have, well, the Good Brothers, and you have Jay White, and you have Chris Bay, and I think you have somebody else. Can't think of who that is right now, but you have someone else um, as well. And I think, who, who else is part of the group? I can't, I can't really think, but you, you get the idea. I know there's one, one more person. And then, as far as AEW is concerned, you kind of have something there with Jay White making appearances on that show, as well as you have the, you know, the have the undisputed elite, kind of being like an offshoot of, you know, Bullet Club. If you know they're making it look like they have an allegiance with Jay White, you know, you have to wonder if they they're going to be and if this, you know, follow through on you know them working all together at Forbidden Door. You know, you have, to one, you have to look at the fact that Undisputed Elite could be an offshoot or a potential offshoot of Bullet Club. So you have all these mini factions sp 
spun off factions within the group and, well, and as well as potential ones. And again, it makes you wonder if this could be it. If this, in the long run, potentially could be the last hurrah for Bullet Club. Because, you know, you got some, you got some of the original founding members back, you know, in Anderson and Gallows. You know, you have them basically riding a high that they haven't rode in a while. You had on WWE the potential uniting of two of the most prominent leaders in the group. And then, like I said, on AEW, you have a potential spin-off uh, sub-faction in the Undisputed Elite. You know, so, and then, of course, you have the House of Torture. You have the impact variation of the group. You know, and then of course you have the initial group in Japan, and they're all riding this huge wave of momentum. They're all riding this huge wave of momentum, so it makes you wonder if this is it. If with all with all the Bullet Club stuff all around, and them basically sort of, you know, uh, enjoying a revival, a renaissance, you know, a revival, a resurrection, if you will. Um, you know, that's reminiscing of the glory days in the past. And, and I say that with all due respect. You have to wonder if this could be it. You know, if this last year, this ninth anniversary leading to the 10th anniversary could be the final year Bullet Club. And if it is, and if the 10th anniversary is the final chapter, you know, you have to also wonder how are they going to celebrate it. Will companies like AEW and WWE and Impact allow some of the talent you know, whether they're cool, cool with it right, whether they're cool with it or not right now, you have to wonder who the, you know, if they'll let any of them go over and celebrate um, in the process. You have to wonder that. You have to be curious about that. You know, and you also have to wonder that with this going into the 10th anniversary, you have to also wonder, you know, who else, you know, at least for the final run, could join Bullet Club. You know. Did anybody expect Juice Robinson, who had been feuding with them, to join? No, but yet here he is. It's rock hard, Juice Robinson. So you have to be curious, you have to be curious as to who else they could recruit, you know, within New Japan, and um, you know, you know, within New Japan, and in, you know, outside of New Japan, like in places like AEW, Impact, and so on. You have to really wonder that. You have to wonder if maybe we'll get any female members to join. That's something possible, but we'll see. But again, it still raises the question, looking at you know the ninth anniversary celebration about a night or so ago, you have to wonder if this ninth anniversary leading to 10th is the last hurrah for Bullet Club. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Comment if you like. Love to hear from each and every one of you on it. And I am out.